Afghanistan's Grand Vision – Building Asia's Largest Artificial River Afghanistan is a nation known more for its struggles than its successes. However, the country is defying all odds by embarking on an ambitious project that is poised to put it on the global map. Despite enduring five decades of warfare, turmoil and economic hardship, Afghanistan is now in the midst of a groundbreaking project, the Kushtipa Canal, which will rank as one of the world's most extensive artificial rivers. Remarkably, this endeavor is being funded solely by Afghanistan itself, with no foreign aid or outside engineering. So, what's the story behind this epic canal, and why is Afghanistan so heavily invested in it? Join us in unraveling this remarkable journey, exploring all the details about this monumental project and how it is changing the future of Afghanistan. In March 2022, Afghanistan embarked on a groundbreaking irrigation project of unparalleled scale, the Kushtipa Canal. This monumental canal stretches over 285 kilometers and boasts an impressive water discharge capacity of 650 cubic meters per second. This capacity will enable it to provide vital irrigation to an expanse of 550,000 hectares of land. Remarkably, the Kushtipa Canal represents Afghanistan's very first foray into large-scale irrigation endeavors. Nestled in northern Afghanistan within the Amu River Basin, this project holds immense significance. The Amu Darya, a river of paramount importance to Afghanistan and the Central Asian region, plays a pivotal role in the socio-economic, ecological and political landscapes. With nearly 80 million people reliant on its water resources, the river's catchment area spans a vast 309,000 square kilometers, winding across 2,540 kilometers through Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan. Notably, 1,250 kilometers of its course forms a shared border between Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. From a geographical perspective, Afghanistan holds a significant stake in the Amu River Basin, encompassing 25% of its territory and contributing a substantial 28% of the river's overall water output. Despite this, Afghanistan's water consumption remains comparatively modest in relation to its neighboring countries, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Currently, Afghanistan utilizes only a fraction, about 6.25% of the Amu River's total annual water production which equates to approximately 5 billion cubic meters each year. In contrast, Uzbekistan claims the lion's share at 41.25%, while Turkmenistan follows closely with 28.75%. Meanwhile, Tajikistan draws about 9.4% primarily for electricity generation. The roots of Afghanistan's water projects date back to the 1970s, during President Mohammad Dawood Khan's rule. The Afghan government, under his leadership, initiated efforts to harness the Amu River's waters for irrigation and hydroelectric power generation. This is when the Kushtipa Canal project emerged. In 1977, President Khan journeyed to Moscow to secure funding for this venture and engaged in discussions with Soviet leaders about the canal's potential. Unfortunately, despite initial aspirations and plans, the project never materialized. Factors such as the 1978 coup d'etat, extended political turmoil, the ravages of war and financial limitations collectively hindered the realization of this grand endeavor. It's a disheartening tale, wouldn't you agree? Today, the construction of the Kushtipa Canal in Afghanistan has been driven by several pressing factors. First and foremost, Afghanistan is grappling with a severe water crisis aggravated by drought, the effects of climate change, and a rapidly expanding population. As a result, the country faces one of the lowest per capita water availability rates globally, with a mere 12% of its land suitable for agriculture. In light of these challenges, the canal project was paramount in order to enhance agricultural production, bolster food security, and foster economic development within the nation. As a nation heavily reliant on agriculture, this canal is poised to open up new horizons for cultivation, providing a lifeline to local communities and boosting the country's economy. Notably, the Taliban government, which assumed control of Afghanistan in August 2021, has prioritized the canal project and boldly asserted its ability to execute it independently 
without needing foreign assistance. So, how is this mega project coming to life? The construction of the canal commenced early in 2022 and is overseen by the National Development Corporation, a state owned enterprise under the governance of the Taliban. What's truly remarkable is that this colossal project is entirely funded solely through government tax revenues. Initial estimates pegged the cost at $500 million, but recent projections suggest an additional $100 million might be required. Now, you might be wondering how Afghanistan is pulling off such a grand project with limited resources, outdated equipment, a shortage of experienced engineers, and no external assistance. Some Asian media outlets have been quite loud in criticizing the project, alleging mistakes, carelessness, and poor engineering practices. However, a closer look reveals a different story. The government's approach was methodically rooted in comprehensive land surveys and soil studies. They didn't just send some diggers to randomly dig a canal, instead they planned meticulously. The goal was to avoid the need for costly water lifts, prevent flooding during the winter and ensure soil compatibility. To achieve this, the canal had to be built on flat land with an elevation similar to the source area on the Amu Darya River. Additionally, it needed to traverse the most fertile lands and pass near towns and villages along the way. The canal begins from the Kolda district in Balk province and extends its reach through a network of secondary and tertiary canals, branching out along its route. Once the canal's path was established, 200 private contractors were assigned to 114 sections, representing the initial 108km phase. This entailed the coordination of around 7,000 haul truck and excavator drivers, alongside project engineers and other workers. The canal was planned to be built in two phases, and they have now progressed to the final phase, which spans 177 kilometers. Originally scheduled for completion in 2028, the project is advancing at such a promising pace that we anticipate its readiness as early as 2025. In addition to the canal, more bridges and culverts are also currently under construction, further enhancing the region's connectivity and accessibility. It's crucial to underscore Afghanistan's challenging circumstances with a significant portion of its 40 million residents residing in rural and remote areas, where famine is a looming threat due to the severe sanctions imposed on the country. In the face of these hardships, we hope that more ambitious projects focusing on water management, agriculture, electricity and infrastructure will follow in the footsteps of this remarkable initiative. Such projects hold the potential to contribute to Afghanistan's recovery from the scars of conflict and its transformation into a productive member of the global community. This ambitious project not only represents a major milestone for Afghanistan, but also holds regional significance as it contributes to the welfare of millions of people. With no foreign financial support or external engineering expertise, there are lots of doubts surrounding this project. But what do you think? Do you think they will be able to successfully complete this project? Comment below and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.